All right. This young lady's got some knees that are close together. That's the first thing that jumped out to me. I think she's tall. She looks tall. It could be wrong. It could be the angle. Yeah. But she carries herself like a tall person, mm. which is an interesting way of talking about her head position. Because that's what jumps out to me. The strongest is her head position. I see a lot going on in the neck. Mm -hmm. Well, the head rests upon the neck. Yeah. So we can't see her face, but you can tell that she's got a head forward position. If you look at her chin, as you pointed out, looking at her neck, there's a lot going on in that structure. Look at that shoulder too. Mm-hmm. Well, and we know the neck is the shoulder and the neck is the head, right? It's the super highway in between. Whoa. So the same. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's flexed forward there, huh? Well, she's locked down. So yeah, she's she's the front of her body is locked down. Her sternocleido, her neck muscles, her pec minor. The, car, the the part that you said, oh, look at her neck. What is that? That's very, very tight. And it's locked down. But then when she goes to stand up, because this is locked, she rolls her shoulder blades back behind her and works really hard to hold the system up. Yeah, but we know it's not working well because we can see the elbows are very tight to the look body. Look at this. There's so no... Working no arm really window. Hard. Well, she's working really hard to balance her head forward position, which is why I think she's tall. Actually, it, it, it's like almost like she's doing a static extension almost here in a way. Um, like uh, you, I think you could that's fit actually surgery. Right, those look like scars. Right, but the shoulders are so back. No, they're not. It's an illusion. Really? It's an illusion. Mm -hmm. It's an illusion. Again, if you pull out and go big picture, it's an uh -huh. illusion because she's got a head forward position. So there's no way her shoulders are in the right place with her head that forward, far forward. So it's an illusion, which is why there's going to be a conflict or an out of balance. Huh. Would you like me to show you a picture? <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, because she's I'm a slippery one. She's a slippery one. Um... How do I, I take over? I take over? You give me the screen? Yes? Yeah, just hit share. Okie dokie. Thank you for the reminder. We are going to go here. Share. And then I'm going to sneak this up. Can you see this? Yes. All right, great. I froze it here so we could talk about what I'm talking about. And I am guilty of this. Um, you might be very guilty of this because you oh, yeah. talk often about how you hurt yourself doing nothing. I think a lot of people can relate to this picture. Yeah. But if you want to try it on at home, these ropey long muscles, a lot of times you see them on dancers. They are very pronounced or people who, as she was doing, look like they're standing tall. It's a regally kind of look. But these muscles are also, if they get shortened down in the head forward position, right? And then the pec minor, not major, minor gets a wee bit tight. You take this whole structure and you pull it back to mm. sit up, which is why you were like, she looks like she's in static extension. But the reason I said it was an illusion is because it's a reaction. Um, and you can see that because the collarbones we're not following the shoulder girdle. Mm. And then that could be something just to keep working on, to mm. think of, right? So here's your sternocleidomastoid. Sometimes their job is to turn the neck and to extend one side. So sometimes when you talk about those puppy dog ears, right. they're kind of like little, er, er, right. and they do get tight from the head forward because their job is to work in extension more, but they get shortened forward. Right. So now when they go to do their job, they can't do their job. So this person to move their head, instead of using the proper neck muscles, they start using their whole thoracic lumbar back. Mm. And then 
they get neck pain as they strain because their head was never in the right position anyway. It was an illusion. Mm. Just like we can go backwards here on this. I love this little guy. Sitting long periods of time. Everybody's like, I don't, what do you mean? I'm not doing anything. I'm just sitting. But if you're sitting there, something is happening. This oh, yeah. muscle structure in the front is over tightening. All this is the iliacus. This is the psoas. So the primary hip flexor is getting shortened. The inner thighs are losing their mind. So this is tight. And then we go back to our friend up top is tight from sitting. So the whole front of the body gets tight and then this person tries to sit up right right it's very difficult because if they don't do it all together with the whole body they're just going to pull their shoulders back lift their chest and put their head up because we've heard oh this is bad posture so this must be good posture right. shoulders back chest up shoulders back chest up really only works if you say you know, shoulders back, chest up, head on top of spine, shoulders on top of pelvis, pelvis over feet, because then, yes, that is the natural position of the shoulder blades. They fit on your back like a backpack. Mm -hmm. But if you're here and you even might know that and you've got a backpack on and you're like, oh, my God, this thing's so heavy. We've kind of done that by this sitting head forward culture. And this to that I mean, honestly, how many of you out there, including yourself, Dr. Reese, oh, yeah. know this computer athlete? Oh, yeah. Oh, and it, it gets even worse there. because then the head, the eyes go to whenever oh. there's something like <laughs> whenever there's it. something, quote unquote, important, the eyes mm -hmm. go towards the screen. So now it's like this. Yeah. And the head goes and down and up. Yep. And that's how it all begins. And if you were to follow that with a nice extension all the way through your spine, like, yeah. you know, doing the inchworm, yeah. maybe it will be good. But we staccato a lot of our movements and we live in the box. Mm -hmm. And then, as you would probably say, it's inside the box that you get caught and then the medical monopoly tries to fix your box. And we're like, no, you need to get out of your box. Right. Shh, pull up the box. Yeah. And part of that is finding strength inside because to fix this is postural therapy. Like this person we're looking at, I, I love these little guys. We got to name them. See, yeah. They're really, this is what you've talked about. This is the upper trapezius. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of people know that because you're like, oh, what's this thing on my neck? It's the green and it needs to be able to lengthen. Yeah. So your shoulders can go down your back. Right. If we go back now, if we now remembering this, let's go back to our person. Because now her pictures, because she's actually got a relatively nice posture in terms of um, body dynamics. She's actually probably somebody who is in pretty good shape. And I say that because there's enough tone on her body. But she's definitely has a very strong head posture that's driving the forward position of the body. Sometimes it's the hips. Sometimes it's the knees with this particular individual. That head that we just discussed a minute ago is attached. So I don't know when this person sits. I don't know the range of motion of her hips. But I do know that her head forward position is creating that illusion as you go back up, right? Take go your, take yourself back to her primary pictures we looked at. Mm -hmm. And remember, you're like, whoa, look at those shoulders. Look at those shoulders. Yeah. Let's look at it again now. Do you see that little shadow? Yeah. And those that go up, go straight up from there. Keep going, keep going. Oh, just me. Yep, yeah, right there. You see the shadow. So that tells me there's some more going on because that's part of her shoulder girdle and it should be more easily down her back and her back should be wider. Yeah. And again, so thinking about that picture we looked at going in that really strong head forward position, feeling like your whole body is in a sit up that you can't undo. And then you decide to sit up straight. And that's why you see so much going on. And I think that is a surgical line because it's a very deep, Something's going on, something beyond us that that's not telling us. 
Yeah. But whatever is happening, this head forward position, and I'm not going to say it's come from the computer. I just use that to show you right. most of our life is a head forward reality. And right. her hands and her body are following the head. So yeah. she's the primary person where the head leads, body follows. Yeah. And we have we have a left hip hike, a left shoulder. Yes. And the whole head twists. Look at the ears. Yeah. Or should I say, look at the only ear you can see. You can see her left ear, not her right ear. Well, yeah. I, I guess that's your box too. Yeah. But still, you can see the shadow. She's rotated. Yeah. But the head is very much the driver on this particular client. What about, I mean, it kind of looks like a sway back here. She's out in front. Oh, yeah. I'm just telling you what's driving that the sway left, back. Posture. We got the left knee out in front. We got the left, mm -hmm. I'm that's sorry, right, the right knee. knee and the right hip out in front. Mm -hmm. So that's but again, discomfort right there. It does. But her primary issues are her head. Yeah. Because it's so much, if we go back to the guts inside, right? We're messing with the respiratory. Um, you like to talk about the heart. I mean, the neck is what we call a primary critical zone. Like I have a massage license, right? When you work on the neck, you're much more aware than maybe when you're working on someone's thigh. So when I see this woman, I see her neck in distress. That's what I see. And I know it's driving a part of everything that's going on here right. and i would love to help her open her back open her breathing <sighs> right because when you really pull the shoulders black it's very hard to breathe in that position so we know she's not getting the full respiratory and then we can talk about nutrition right but right now her neck is because she's got great feet i mean those are great feet it's just a, uh, you know not a there's not a lot she of distance stand there. a little bit wider but yeah she's standing like that to balance her shoulders mm. everything's vectors right so she's got her shoulders back chest up head forward legs are tight and she took a really nice photo her left side has more issues but you've already pointed that out from the bottom to the top yeah I'm going to suspect she can touch the floor. I could be wrong. Yeah. But it's a really strong head forward position. Tight pec minor, tight sternocleido, tight neck. Right. Mm -hmm. The good news is it is oh, that's, all, it's all correctable. That's, that's very correctable. The neck is correctable. Especially if you're aware of it and you're, you've done something like sent in a P ray and you're like, I want to know what's going on. This person, the first thing they should do is the static back or the levator stretch. That's just different names. But for people who are like, what? Lie on your back, throw your legs over the chair, put a book under your head or maybe three magazines. That's going to give a nice stretch to those muscles in the back we just looked at. The levators, the upper trapezius, it's going to just give a little traction. Yeah. And your whole back is going to let go. Yeah. She, she'd be interesting to see how she handles. It would be interesting to see how she handles um a pigeon toed pose too. Oh, she'd love it. She'd <laughs> love it if she knew what to do with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It would be nice. Pigeon like toed, walk, make the thighs clock. tight, right? Uh, pigeon toed. And then I would go into a wall clock and rebalance her shoulders and her head. Mm. Mm-hmm. Again, I feel like everything below is the symptom of above. And right, we want to talk about like, where's the driving symptom? Where's the real problem here? This woman's neck and head. Yeah. Yep. And I, I mean, I think she's tall. I could be wrong, but unless it's a really tiny, you know, she looks tall. She's carrying tall. The background seems tall. And so tall people do a lot of strange things in their cars too, right? They do a lot more like, oh, I can't see. So we don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Let, let's get this her. woman corrected. You know, some you nutrition, agree. some postural therapy, a little mindfulness, and she's good to go. That's you're it. Good to go. Yeah, for sure. All right. If anyone out there that's watching wants their body evaluated, wants a P-Ray, what we call a P-Ray, just go to peaceoverpain.com.